stuff, but I mean, if, if people say, where do I know that I can get a uh, two by six construction, constructed home, you know, Gardner could be the only place. And, and I know the counter to that is that there'll be fewer houses built, but the counter to that is it costs more to build those houses. The value will therefore increase the property tax base and the homes that aren't two by six will also go up because now they'll be in, in greater demand for those people that can't afford to build a more energy efficient home. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had that experience with, uh, with Dennis Pugh and, and Ron Reichman uh, in their subdivision. Uh, they built all those homes energy efficient well before <coughs> there was a and from a market perspective, um, you know, they're very attractive. People, you know, selected those homes because of it. So, you know, I think, again, um, from the standpoint of, of you know, our position, you know, we need to comply with what the, uh, what the requirements are, and, and I think by encouraging builders to uh, provide more energy efficient homes, we help ourselves in the long run uh, with respect to our electric utility and, and, and everything else. So uh, I'm glad that we were able to have a couple of builders that were ahead of the curve, uh, well ahead of the curve, as a matter of fact. And, uh, and it's good to know that uh, Dennis with Roush Coleman, so perhaps uh, we'll see more of that. Any other questions? But the public policy issue is what we're debating tonight, not the necessarily the marketability. I mean, if well, if they're not marketable, I mean, you know, some people there's a, there's a set of people that will only come to Gardner if they know that every house that's built is going to be energy efficient. I mean, it may not be in the roads that uh, you may want, but in the end, they'll raise all property values uh, if, if that is mandated by us. And, and that's a great opportunity to be the leader in the market, especially since we have so much vacant ground, uh, where as long as you're not in a hurry, it's a, I think, a positive face on, on the building industry. I know it's, you know, if you're a, if you're a home builders association, and your goal is to increase the number of builders in your organization, it's, it's the wrong move. And again, that's not what we're here for. So, anybody else have any uh, support for that concept? I, I just want to make sure you don't think it meets what we should. You think but we need to add further restrictions or further things that are going to make it a little bit more energy efficient? Is that is that what I'm getting? I want to make sure I understand. You know more about this than I do. Well, the first the first thing I want to know is what did we take out of the code? And I that's not clearly eliminated in this document unless unless it was highlighted in some meeting. I don't I don't see. Like I, I had no idea that R19 was you know the the recommended code that we downgraded it to meet the Home Builders Association's request. So I guess before I, I would even support any of this, I would like to see what was, you know, down down from what was recommended by, I guess, the Department of Energy, is that right? Or well, the energy efficiency entered into the building codes um, through the federal government and different agencies. Um, utility companies looking to improve efficiency across because of things like the power grid and so in answer to your question, yeah, that's I mean I'm, but but even before I go that far, I don't even know really what's missing. So I kinda like to table the discussion until we find out what what things have been downgraded. Jim, do we have a timeline associated with this uh, new business item? Most of the jurisdictions are looking to go live April 1st, 2013. Okay. And um, that was our intention too, is to be with, one of the things that happened last year, several of the mayors uh, directed their city administrators to give their building officials to create more uniformity across Thompson County. And they asked me if I'd like to partner with that. I said, absolutely. I think we're um, one of the major players in the metro. We constantly rank in the top 10, 12. And, 
permits issued. And, um, so that's part of what this is. This is a collaboration between the builders and the jurisdictions in the area. And, and so it's not going to be, I mean, nobody's, nobody's adopting the code as is, as far as energy efficiency. So you would be the only one out there. And it's, I am. And it's a, by the way, I want to tell you, it's a big jump from the 06 to the 12. That's why there is this collaboration. And we know that after we go through this three-year cycle, that in 15, we'll probably upgrade a little bit more. And, and that's why within the code, there are some modifications to um, soften the blow, to, so to speak because of some of the life safety provisions, like we have tamper-proof receptacles. Uh, there's history out there where kids can take a paper clip and they get electrocuted. Well, that's not in the code now. It is before it is now. And we, we feel that's critical. Carbon dioxide detectors, it's a, it's, a, it's a crime how many people die because they don't put in detectors. So to help offset that, there was some uh, discussion on energy efficiency, and um, that was one of the trade-offs lots of professionals and lots of uh, government organizations in the metro. Well, I would like to make a move that we just go ahead and table it for further discussion and give Jim some time to, you know, provide due diligence and, to your point, Larry, provide those highlights and then we can <coughs> discuss it since it's not a tight timeline. Sure. Second. Mm -hmm. Motion, Gorsic, Sakatovich, that we table uh, discussion regarding ordinance number two four zero until the debate. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All opposed. Um, on staff updates, I know uh, comment tonight from Mr. Benjamin regarding uh, school safety in general it is a very new topic. Chief and I spoke <coughs> Briefly, if you wouldn't mind to kind of give a general idea of what what next steps we're looking at without anything you know concrete at the moment. Well, basically, um, as you mentioned, we do have two SROs that are signed in the school district. Those salaries are paid by the school. Um, the only time that we pay the salaries is in the summer months when they're out. Um, both SROs, uh, one is primary is the high school. The other primary is Pioneer Ridge with set by Celebration Park. Um, however, the rest of the schools are provided most of those two SROs, so they do make rounds throughout the day to the other schools. And even prior to what happened last week, I mean, part of our um, program or policy at the department is officers are on the street when they're not handling calls, um, that they do make regular rounds and trips by the schools you know, to check on things to make sure, you know, we can try to secure anything, but, you know, it's, we do the best we can with what we have, but that's kind of what we have in place right now. Um, I do have a call in to um, the Dr. Gill House. Uh, hopefully sometime this week we'll sit down and visit, uh, kind of get his feeling on where he's wanting to go in the future, um, and then come back in with the uh, uh, city administrator and kind of uh, give her a summary of where we're at. But we do make regular passes by the schools. Since Friday, they've been uh, directed to, especially during lunch times and when school's out, to make sure that we've got cars, if they're available and not on calls, that they are around our schools. Who, who um, <coughs> is there a forum, I guess, with the, with the school, I don't know if it's a board or if it's just Dr. Gilhouse, um, where you all, the police department, would make recommendations on or consult on different safety measures that the school district, or is that really just decided internal today? No, in fact, um, there is a crisis manual for the school district. It's been in place for many years. Um, it was just revised last year, as a matter of fact. They spent many months, the SROs are on the committee. Um, I served on the committee too as, a, as an advisor. We had uh, a couple from the sheriff's office on as well making recommendations. <coughs> but there are crisis manuals for each one of the schools. We carry them out of patrol cars. We train on them. The school trains on them. That's what we do, and that's what we go by. Jim, I know you said that you, you have a call in the Dr. Gilhouse, and, and obviously you can work with Cheryl at, uh, at everybody's convenience, but I'm wondering if maybe the, the mayor ought to make a, uh, or reach out 